Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Championship Leadership Podcast. And today, I, uh, I'm excited. My first guest from Switzerland. And, uh, you know, as you're listening to this, depending on when you're listening to this, currently, we're going through the, the worldwide pandemic with this uh, coronavirus. And just we're talking a little bit offline on how that's impacting us. But um, hopefully, uh, by the time you hear this, we're, we're, out, we're out of the woods on this thing. Um, but 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 I digress. I'm excited to have Nathaniel Zerbrig here from, like I said, Switzerland here today joining us. He's a speaker and victorious mindset mentor. Uh, so welcome to the show, Nathaniel. Hey, thank you very much for the invite. Thank you for having me here. And uh, yeah, good meeting you all on the podcast. I'm yeah, really excited absolutely. to be here. Yeah, how did how did did you? So I didn't know I was international. You had you heard, heard heard of the podcast from a friend, or just came across it through online, or? No, I actually come across online, and um, I just saw like a champion leadership podcast, yeah. and I thought, hey, I'm gonna write. I have to write that guy. Maybe I we'll love have it. Change to be on that and. Um, it didn't go like maybe it was like two days, two yeah. days later, and then you sent me an email back. All and, right, uh, here we go. Well, sorry really for the slow response. Yeah, <laughs> no, I'm excited to have you, and I'm glad you reached out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I love uh, kicking off the conversation with this question to start things off. The name of the podcast, like you say, it's Championship Leadership what comes to mind for you? Like, what does that mean to you when you hear championship leadership? Um, for me, actually, like, I, I love to, to champion people. And I, I realized over my journey of life that all people have something in them, something unique. Um, but it's not there yet. It's in us, but it's not mm -hmm. actually yet there. And, um, as you said, I'm a victorious mindset coach, and I love to uh, help people to champion their unlimited potential. And leadership, on the other hand, is all about um, one, my mentor, John Maxwell, says, a leader is one who sees the way, goes the way, and talks the way. And I love that about leadership. We all, we all are leaders at some point and uh, we can champion each other with the unique unique skills talent passion and strength that we have yeah. and i think that's my fear of championship leadership yeah yeah i love that thank you and so yeah john maxwell you mentioned him as your mentor and uh man he's indirectly been a mentor of mine like that's really those were some of the first books that I really got into and started reading personal development for myself out of college almost 20 years ago now. And all the, and I continue to consume and read his books. He's, he's kind of, uh, you know, as we, we got the Mount Rushmore in the United States of the presidents, he's kind of on that Mount Rushmore of, of leadership and personal development. Absolutely. Yeah. This guy is like something else and so blessed to, yeah, that we can be a part of his community. Yeah, and yeah. learn from him. Yeah, yeah. So you said, uh, you know, part of what you said is you just love to to help champion that the best and the potential and the capacity of of men and women to get that out of them. Like, where does that come from for you? And maybe just yeah, just tell us a little bit more about yourself. You have an incredible story, so maybe share your story and kind of really how you've gotten to where you are today as that speaker and victorious mindset mentor. Absolutely. So my story is quite uh, unique, so like every story. And um, I, yeah, I, I feel like I had like the 15 years of my life, the first 15 years of my life, my life was like a mess, like medically seen as well. Um, um, I had a lot of, um, yeah, medical challenges that I had to go through. I'm not gonna too much into medical things, but um, mm -hmm. I had um, three failed kidney transplants. I was uh, diagnosed with an incurable chronic illness when I was one year old, uh, which led to losing my own kidneys. 
Um, I remember spe specifically uh, an event when I was three years old, I had a big stroke that led me into two weeks of a coma. And after two weeks, um, the doctor said, hey, um, there's nothing else we can do. And um, so I was, I was hanging basically on the life-saving treatment and on the life-saving machines. Uh, I was in coma, my parents, um, yeah, they didn't know what to do and the doctor didn't know what to do. And um, so after those two weeks, they said, okay, we're gonna turn off all those machines. We, yeah, there's nothing wow. else we can do. And um, so my my parents, they were there, even my family already, they uh, prepared a funeral. Um, but mm. at the time they turned off the machines, my parents were beside my bed and all of a sudden, somehow, I, I say it's a miracle. Um, I'm a person of faith and I believe in miracles. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, um, so all of a sudden I started to speak again. And yeah, that was, the, wow. that was uh, basically the day I come back to life. Uh, one how of the old were you time. then again? I was uh, four years old at oh, the wow. time, three, yeah. four years old. And um, yeah, that was a huge miracle. Um, and uh, yeah, it continued. It, it wasn't, I recovered from that. I, um, yeah, a, a few weeks later, I lost my hearing uh, capacity of over 80% because of medication, of side effects of the medication. And um, then, yeah, it continued like one challenge after another. And uh, yeah, as I say, three failed kidney transplant. Uh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't be alive for six times by now, according to the doctors. And I lost my, um, yeah, I lost my, I was become hearing impaired and um, had over 40 um, operations and uh, three lung infections that I have almost uh, like has almost led to, to uh, yeah, to dying. And as well, um, one of the biggest, probably biggest um, real event that I experienced myself was when I was eight years old and I lost my second kidney transplant. And the reality was uh, for two and a half years, the first time in my life I could enjoy a full life. I could eat by myself. I could go to school, try out new hobbies. I didn't have to go to the hospital three times a week for my life-saving treatment. Wow. And all that stopped after two and a half years when I lost my second kidney transplant. And I was uh, falling into a deep depression because all I ever wanted was as a child to have a kidney and have a normal life like everybody else. Um, at that time, I just realized, okay, I have to go back to, to my old crappy life, going to the hospital three times a week um, and all that having again on and on again um, problems with my health. And so two weeks, I was uh, fully depressed. All I did was talking or thinking, sorry, thinking about how I actually can end my life. Mm. And there was a point where my parents realized that um, they have to do something. And they brought basically partial care to my home and something shifted in my mind, in my life at that time. I received um, a shift happened of having emotional strength again, um, physical strength and spiritual strength. And uh, I realized that from that time, actually there's more to life than just having a kidney, than just having something, um, yeah, 
something that we can get or buy or anything like that. And um, so it continued my life, continued. I had to go back to my life saving treatment. Um, I had another kidney transplant when I was 11 years old that lasted for about uh, 13 months. And then with 15, uh, 15 years, when I was 15 years old, I finally felt like my life become stable. And so I realized, okay, now I have that story, but I wanna help other people. There's something in me, there's a unique story that I can um, help people to overcome challenges and um, struggles and difficulties. And over the past, like, 31 years of a whole over the whole journey that I went through, I actually realized it's not it's not um, what is happening around us or within us that limited us. I think it's more how we set our mindset that we can unlimit our potential or even how we can overcome the the struggles, the limitations, and the difficulties. And I love the reality that our mindset can be so strong and um, has a powerful, um, it's very effective on how we deal with what's happening around us and in us and all that. And I hope it answers your question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so we're like, yeah, how did you, you talk about you know, you have a message for others or a story that can help impact others that, that might be going through similar experiences or maybe just very different experiences, but, but uh, a lot of the same doubt and fear, depression. And, and so how, how did you take that and turn it into what you do today as a speaker and impact people as, as this victorious mindset coach as well? What, what, what dry down that path? Yeah, I think it was, it was, I, I never thought that I would end up as a speaker or as a victorious mindset coach. I think um, it happens day by day over the last 15 years. Um, I think for me, it hasn't to be like for everyone else but I think for me especially was the desire that I had so maybe I, I remember when I was 15 years old I wanted to go to Australia that was one of my first desires that I had um, but I didn't know why I wanted to go to Australia so I went to Australia when I was actually 23 years old and then I attended a leadership college and what I realized, it wasn't actually, I wasn't, when I was 15 years old, I saw the whole picture. But I think it's something that we do along the journey. We, we align our mindset towards the desire that we have. Um, I think everyone has our own desire. Maybe some of you want to build a business. And one of the biggest challenges is always to break it down, to break, to, to break down the desire and the, the imagination. What has helped me to mostly is to really have, yeah, just dream big. Like I want to encourage yeah. you, everyone, dream big beyond your imagination. Um, we have that crisis here at the moment and I, I feel like like we have a lockdown in Switzerland and mm -hmm. um, I currently am struggling with not being able to travel in the world because yeah. I'm on a, a waiting list for the transplant. Mm -hmm. And what I want to encourage you, whatever circumstances you are in or if that in business and leadership, um, see yourself already there where yeah. you want to be. And I think that what I learned, um, how I went there or how I got there, and um, it's, it's powerful. Imagination is something that I realized is one of the most powerful things that we have. And um, keeping it um, high, like 
um, I I don't know like what what dream you have, but I think like imagination can become a discipline, and yeah. the more we imagine, the more we imagine it, the more um, action, the more it turns into actions, and this is something that the way I ended up here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I, I agree with with that wholeheartedly. Um, you know, big dreams, big aspirations, right? And uh, to I love what you just said about making that a practice, right? Like a daily routine or ritual that you have to continually uh, dream big. Because I think a lot of people do. They they uh, kind of give up on them or let them go after a while um, for whatever reasons, right? So maybe uh, to that point is the next question of like, so what's what is the vision for you? I think championship leadership leaders have incredible vision. And not only just incredible vision, but uh, courage to execute and take action on that. Um, so I'd love to hear, you know, because you're a big dreamer and uh, and and you put that into daily practice for yourself. What what's what's the vision or impact for you in the next five to ten years of what you want to do? Yeah, absolutely. So I I have a lot of dreams. So the challenge for me, like. Dreaming is very easy for me, yeah. but um, I think it, it's a lifelong journey to to divide the dreams into daily steps. But what I have realized is, um, yeah, I, I currently sit looking at the whole picture where I want to go, and each each year, the first weekend of the year, I'm gonna take off a weekend. I look at the big picture. I do five years um, gold. I do one year gold, and I do monthly and weekly gold. And um, of course, this this will always be the challenge for to really implement the right steps on towards the dream. But I think like what I currently ex uh, currently experiencing or have experienced already in a few ways to really uh, trust in the process and enjoy, enjoying the, the journey as well. I think we can, as leaders, we have big vision. We can often get so quickly cogged up in seeing only big, the big picture. Yeah. And, um, what, what and this is okay, but I think as well like what's really helping for for many people and actually the the beautiful thing is we have way more people around us than we think we have, and I'm a big believer in the disc report. If anyone has ever heard yeah. of it or not yeah. heard of it, it's um, a report that shows you how you react in different environments, how you communicate to people. And um, I love to see like whatever strength or passion one has, it can add, it can, one person can complement that person and it, it explodes. Yeah. And I love that about that basically people are the biggest asset that we have. And um, uh, it, it's very challenging, uh, for sure, to complement. And uh, I just realized I have a person in my life that is the opposite of what I am. And um, it's very challenging to adapt, but I know it's a person that I need because to constantly work out the vision that in me and some are visionary some are really good in details yeah. and if we learn to yeah just to navigate that and to harmony with each other i think that's something um really amazing for leaders to to have people on board that complement the the weakness with the strengths yeah totally right people. i think yeah great especially championship leaders uh they recognize their weaknesses that so are secure enough to know that they don't have all the answers and nor should they. And that's, that's a whole reason for having a team and people around you is to, to help fill those gaps and uh, to get you all ultimately like 
to that mission or to that thing that you are that big goal or objective or dream that you have is to to all collectively come together and a great leader is going to build that team and and surround himself with those pe- those types of people right absolutely yeah what is uh is, this is a question that i love to ask is and i i'm sure you just like everyone has has many critical moments or, or turning points or defining moments in your life and maybe you've already kind of talked about it a little bit but what's a moment in your life where it really it was that defining moment for you where you just realized you made a shift it was a kind of that fork in the road decision and uh you decided to make this choice you did which has you where you are today but had you made a different decision could could absolutely be somewhere different in your life um you know i think we have a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs that listen to the show and i think probably many of them especially now right in this time it's 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 definitely a critical moment for many and with the virus and the lockdown and businesses and the economic impacts and um maybe even daily there's critical decisions so is there a moment that pops out to you that you could share with the listeners yeah i think uh it's it's a lifelong journey for everyone and for me i think it was the lifelong journey of being positive like yeah. of learning to be positive and uh i think we can yeah we we all have a choice to either look at or what's going on right now or looking into the future that um um yeah will be turn out much better than we actually accept or expect to be yeah and uh, i just something got in my in my mind today yeah we we hear a lot in the media about especially in this current situation that um a lot of people die and um all the people are affected by the coronavirus and i don't want to minimize it yeah um but i i saw a post from a friend today and he was um writing about all the flus happening in the past mm-hmm. and he was way going back to roman empire and all, all that and there were there were numbers like millions to 10 million of people died and i was like oh, okay actually wow. <laughs> we have yeah we in in that moment it looks like terrible yeah but when we look what we have how far we have come medically and how far we have come um um with ourselves with our health system and all that um we we are actually now really still i don't want to minimize it we are actually in a really good place no absolutely yeah people. yeah and uh, that's one thing like being being positive and mm-hmm. knowing that okay now it's a challenging situation but once that's over um it will make me stronger we will have probably most of the people will have challenges that they have never faced before but i think that a challenge is always to learn and be stronger and become better um that's one thing being positive uh looking at the positive side the second thing is what i realized is um just being grateful like i tell yeah. myself often it could be more worse than it is yeah. and it, it actually could be more worse right. and um it could be better yes <laughs> but it could also be way worse than what it is and i think that two things that i really want to encourage people in in difficult times in challenges to look at it and that's also something that had to do with imagination because when you um look at the positive side you imagine already the better thing and you take action towards that and the whole surrounding will look completely different than when you look at on the other yeah. side and uh that's what i can share with you yeah that no that's uh yeah staying positive like you said it it, it can always be worse right and for many maybe it is and so yeah just to to be very grateful even during these times is is important it's a great perspective to have for sure um 
as we wrap this up, I want to ask you just one last thing, like what would be one or two things that you could share with the listeners that if they, they take an implement today into their life, they could help move themselves forward today. Yeah, sure. Um, I will really encourage you to like, enjoy the journey, uh, stay yeah. the path, and uh, be, be unique. I think we, we are sometimes so caught up as leaders today to want to be like everybody else. Mm-hmm. But I believe um, you have um, unique strengths, you have unique values, and you have unique passions. And um, I want to help people to basically uh, have a victorious mindset. And a few, I have a strategy that, that I can help you with if you are keen and interested in, uh, which I call Four Steps to Unlimit Your Life. And uh, I really want to encourage you to download my free ebook on my website, nathanielchilbeck.com. And it's all about helping you identifying your unique strengths, passion, value, values. And if you don't have a dream yet, to create a dream. And uh, I would love to help you on the journey to live out the dream, to take you along and uh, that you can create a dream that, that you always wanted to live and in turn that drives other people to dream as well and uh, have a look at it and uh, I hope I have helped you and encouraged and inspired you today and uh, would love to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that free gift and if you're listening and, and you're driving or whatever and you can't write this down, we'll make sure that we absolutely have this in the link in the show notes uh, right directly to his his page where you can grab the four steps to unlimit your life. So uh, appreciate you, Nathaniel, for being here today. It's been so awesome to connect and, and I hope that we can definitely stay in touch. And, uh, yeah. and yeah, just have a great day. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Never give up. Yeah, absolutely. Have a great day. You too.